Now, let me go back and, and just hit some other things here. Um, I want to deal with this issue. Did God change his mind? In verse 12, he says, I will strike them down and make you into a greater nation. Moses prays for seven verses. Moses prays, and then in verse 20, God says, I've forgiven them as you asked. I won't wipe them out. I was going to send a plague and destroy them and raise you into a nation. I won't do that now, Moses. I will forgive them as you asked. Did God change his mind here? So my statement is, can God change his mind? Okay? And I want to suggest that God can change his mind. Okay? 2319 is what you're looking for. Anyways, um, so can God change his mind? And the suggestion is here that, yes, God changed his mind here. Okay? By the way, can you change your mind? Can you change your mind? Question, can you do something God can't do? You say, well, yeah, I can sin. God can't sin. Okay, now I'm talking just about changing one's mind. It's not right or wrong. If you can change your mind and God can't change his mind, then do you see what I'm saying? That's uh, something. Did God change his mind here? I'm going to wipe them out. Moses prayed. That tells us a whole lot of things about prayer too, doesn't it? It tells us a whole lot of things. Does prayer make a difference? When I was younger, I was taught prayer, you pray not because you're going to change the mind of God, you pray because you just want to be obedient to God. You pray because God has commanded you to pray. Is Moses praying here because God commanded him to pray? Or is Moses praying because he wants to make a difference? And he wants to, does Moses want to change the mind of God on this issue? Yes, he does. And so he pleads with God, God, you can't do this. And he pleads with God, okay? And so I'm saying, does prayer make a difference? I want to say, Moses prayed to God, and eight verses later, God says, okay, I won't, I will forgive them as you asked. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is prayer very, very significant? Do you realize in prayer that we can address the God of the universe? The God of the universe, Samuel, Samuel, Shamuel, God listens, God listens. There's times, to be honest with you, I've been a very boring person. There's times I can't even get my wife to listen to me. God, the God of made the universe listens. And he responds then by, by saying, okay, I won't wipe them up. I will forgive them as you asked. Okay, this brings up this huge debate. The huge debate. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. So we change our mind. It's we change our mind on the basis of what we were going to do before was a mistake. We change it to a better option. Okay. So God changes his mind, and then that was a mistake. But that contradicts who so God can't change then. I see where you're going with that. Right, he can't. So how can he change his mind? Okay, does everybody hear that? If God is perfect, then how can God change his mind? Because God certainly was unable to make a mistake. I think, let me tackle it this way. I think you're thinking about the perfect or the good as singular. What happens if the good is multiple? That rather than changing, have you ever changed your mind, not because one was wrong and one was right, but because there were two goods there and you could have picked either one and you picked one in versus the other? Or maybe not even better. Maybe you decided to choose the other one just for, to choose the other one. So what I'm suggesting is that there may be multiple goods and that God can pick good one, good two, good three, good four. And that maybe the perfect isn't the perfect, but maybe there's possibly multiple perfects out there that, that could get God from what point A to point B. Okay? And so that's what I'm suggesting here, that maybe the future is not singular, but maybe the future has potential in terms of possibilities, and that there are multiple possibilities. In other words, can God accomplish his purpose? And can he accomplish that purpose through multiple ways of accomplishing it? And then if you allow for those possibilities, does human freedom, does that allow for human freedom then? 
And does it also allow for God to interact with human beings then as far as how that future will be shaped? Now, um, Hannah, I need you to pull that uh, 19, or 2319. Did anybody do Malachi? But anyways, she's going to read a verse. Um, she's going to contradict me here. No, don't like what I said now. Then I got to contradict myself. Okay. Oh my All right. I'll contradict myself. Here. Look in your Bible to chapter 23, verse 19, staying in the book of Numbers. We could go over to, to Malachi and do the same type of thing. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should change his mind. So that seems to contradict what I just said, right? That God cannot change his mind because he's not a man. Yes, Hannah. So this is what I like about what you said because Hannah there said that the way men change their minds is different from the way God changes his mind. So you could say God is is God a son of God, God is not a son of man that he should change his mind and possibly the way that sons of men change their mind. Yeah. So that maybe there's a difference in how God changes his mind as far as humans change their mind. The suggestion over here is we change our mind when something is wrong and we change to something is better. Is it possible that God changes his mind between multiple goods and then opens up possibility? Now, when can God not change? Can God not change when he's given us his promise? When he's promised something, does God have to keep his promise? So he can't change his mind when he's promised something. But question, does every time God open his mouth, is it always a promise? Every time you open your mouth, is it a promise? Can you, my, no, by the way, can you make promises? Can you make promises? Yes, you can make promises. But how much of your life is promises? By the way, is some of your life promises? Yeah, but do you often talk in other ways and, and all sorts, express yourself in all sorts of different ways? So what I'm suggesting here is that what this passage is saying is that when God gives us his word, he can't change his word because he's made a promise. So he's told Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to give you the land, the seed, and the blessing, and so God can't change that. However, how God gives Abraham the land, the seed, and the blessing, the how of that, can that change into all sorts of different ways that God could do that? Jesus has to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Does Jesus have to be born in Bethlehem? Micah chapter 5, verse 2 says the Messiah has got to be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Question, when Joseph and Mary come down, is it possible they could have gone down to Jericho and come up to Jerusalem? Or is it possible they could have gone through Samaria and gone to Jerusalem? Is it possible they could have gone out to the Philistine plain and come up to Jerusalem? Are there many ways that they could have gotten to Bethlehem? And what God is saying is, no, Jesus will be born in Bethlehem, and basically how you get there, whatever, you know, and so allows for flexibility and human choice. Yes? Okay, yeah. Is everybody here? What he's asking, and actually I ask you to look at those passages, especially with Saul. God comes to Saul, I think it's in chapter uh, 13 of 1 Samuel or thereabouts, um, I think it's 13, 15, something like that. God comes to Saul, King Saul, and he says, Saul, if, if you would have obeyed me, I would have made your descendants kings over Israel forever. If you would obey me. And what I'm suggesting here is, let me just put it this way in philosophical terms. Can God do an if statement? Can God do an if statement? If you do this, then I will do this. But if you do this, then I will do this. Can God do conditionals? Can God do conditionals? And if then? And can he have multiple if then? If they do this, I will do this. If they do this. And in, and in a passage in Saul's case, exactly, exactly the case. He says, Saul, if you had, I would have made your descendants kings over Israel forever. But you didn't. And therefore, I'm going to search after a man after my own heart, which is David. Okay? So there, God clearly had two paths. Saul made the choice, and then God responds. And David becomes king. So yeah, uh, that passage in, in 1 Samuel is great. There's another great one in uh, chapter 15 on the city of Kila that we'll, when we get there, I'll go over it and stuff. But, so what I'm suggesting is that there's conditionality, that there's conditionality with God. Not everything is fixed with God. Now, by the way, are certain things fixed with God? There are certain things that are fixed, and there are other things that are not fixed. 
And so, by the way, does that allow then for possibility multiplicity and allows for human freedom and these things getting put together? Now.